again so much. Um, with your help, we've been able to, to do a lot of great work, and we, just, we continue looking forward to ways to partner with Cypress Creek, and we want to say thanks again. God bless. Two thousand removals. That's a lot of ouch. And yet, what's so amazing is, is, is Chris's commitment but I also put it out to you all. This congregation, after Chris came, raised more than $3,000 for his ministry. And he was able to put that into his second vehicle that is used to go into the inner city of Chicago and remove gang tattoos. Does it most every Friday or Saturday night? And in some way, we're participating. But $3,000 plus is a lot of money. And yet, I would suggest that it wasn't really that much of an ouch for any individual person. And when you think about what it does, helping transform lives, whether it's gang members or those coming out of human trafficking, suddenly there doesn't seem to be an ouch at all. Because God takes that, what would have been an ouch, and does something amazing with it. And we look at that event in our own faith that was definitely more than just an ouch, but was God giving the very divine nature in the death of Christ to the world. And look what God was able to do with that, to take a sacrifice, to take a death, 
and change not only a few people in one moment of time, but to change countless throughout history. So my prayer is this day as we come around the table, a time in which we remember that act, that it will also bring us into this moment and to realize what God continues to do, taking the collective willingness of a community, even when it sometimes hurts a little bit, and do something amazing with it. Let us prepare for time at the table. Jesus sits at the table Breaking the bread with his friends What he is able before his life on earth ends. Do this in remembrance of me. Do this in remembrance of me. Israelites, as Bruce said, was crossing that river. Part of our faith story is coming each and every week to this table that is set for us. An act of covenant, if you will. You see, we are, we are part of the family here. We are the uh, body of Christ as a family. And this is what we do. We come forward and we meet God here at this table. When we come forward, we take the bread, we dip it in the cup. Jesus used wine, we substituted it with grape juice. And then we eat the, these emblems and let them fill our body with Christ. On that night before he was betrayed, Jesus used this as a teaching moment with the disciples. He took an ordinary loaf of bread, he blessed it, and he broke it, and he said, take and eat from this, all of you, for this is my body that will be broken for you. In a like manner, he took the cup, and he said, take and drink from it. This is, represents the blood of the new covenant that is going to be poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. All are welcome to come to this table. And as you come forward, we invite you to bring your attendance card and also your tithes and offerings and place them here because just like Donna told Bruce, his debt is their debt. This is our church and the debt here is our debt. So let's help to pay that debt. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to your table this morning in thanksgiving. We thank you for the awesome gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who laid down his life so that we might be forgiven. We ask your blessing on each of us as we come to this table. Help us to lay all our burdens at your feet and know that you alone can lift us up, strengthen us, and heal us emotionally and physically. Father, give us the courage as we face the challenges, the ouches in our life and in this church. And let your will be done because we know and trust that you have a plan for us larger than any we can imagine. Bless the offerings we bring to you this morning. May they be used to your glory. And Father, enable us to place our trust in you as we pray together the prayer Jesus taught us saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. suggests that most all of us have been in a relationship 
where by being in that relationship, we have experienced an ouch in the sense of we had to give something up. We had to do something that made us feel uncomfortable, maybe hurt a little bit. Uh, and yet, I would suggest that when we are in relationship with somebody, a loving relationship, it doesn't feel like an ouch so much. It feels like an opportunity for God to do something. And I'm convinced that what often happens is that God does do something in that kind of willingness and openness for the sake of another. It happens when we are in relationships one-on-one -on -one or in small groups, but I also believe it happens in the collective community. And my prayer this day is, as strange as it may sound, is that we all feel a little ouch, because it means that God's working. God's working in and through each of us. And when that happens, not just within one individual, but in a collective community, some amazing things happen. Here at Cypress Creek Christian Church, we are a covenant community. And for that reason, we want folks to connect and to grow and to be a part of this place. It's not something where you just say, I'll kind of be in. No, we want you to be fully committed to this church, but more importantly, to the God who called this church into existence. If you wish to respond to that invitation, you can come forward as we're singing our song of discipleship, or you can speak to one of the pastoral staff or elders immediately after the service. Now I invite you, if you're able, to please stand and let all of us join our voices.
Good song. Very good song. Uh, let me tell you some things happening. First of all, we have a work day today. And uh, starting here in just a little while, um, I don't know if Mike's still, Mike's still around. He's over there. He's going to be giving some leadership to this. Uh, if you want to make your way to the uh, uh, Holy Grounds area, and we give directions there. If you did, forgot to change, we got time to go home, change clothes, come on back if you want to. Uh, and uh, a lot of projects to get done around the church. I want to lift up that for the next seven days, I'm hoping that we will all participate in a single devotional every morning. And it, I, my usual daily devotional that goes out by email or on my blog or on Facebook, there's also a copy of this entire week's out there, hard copy, um, out at the visitor center that you can pick up. Or you can do the QR code and it will take you and you can download it in, on a PDF or you can bring it into your iBooks if you want to. Uh, but what, what I want us to be doing is that each day for the next seven days, I want us as a community collectively coming together around a single idea and around a single prayer. So I hope that you will take the time. Again, if you usually get it via email or uh, look at it on the blog, you can still do that. But if you want a hard copy, they're out there. Um, or you can download it as a PDF. Uh, again, we're talking about these coffees, uh, bringing people together to talk about. Uh, I want to lift up that this Wednesday night, uh, we are going to be doing one here at the church. So uh, those who are going to do it in their homes decided they wanted to come together and do it here at the church, which is great. So we invite people who want to come this Wednesday night. We'll still have our usual Wednesday night study as well, so you get to choose which one you want to do. But uh, there's other, there can be other opportunities as well throughout the week. Maybe you've received phone calls um, to come into people's homes and to share in these conversations. Next Sunday, Blood Drive over in Holy Grounds. Uh, for those of you who can give that gift of life, thank you for doing so. And also next Sunday, the elders at 4 o'clock will be meeting and the general board will be meeting at 6.30. And last two things, uh, we're wanting to get... Cypress Creek shirts, polos, other type shirts, nice embroidery of, of the church's logo and everything. Uh, but we have sizes over there in Holy Grounds, different size shirts, so you can go over and kind of figure out what size you're going to need. Because I don't know about you, but they always come in kind of funny sizes. So you're able to take a look at those, and uh, yeah, we'll be talking about in the next couple of weeks about purchasing those and getting them here for uh, the first Saturday of October, which is Creek Fest and our blessing of the animals and stuffed animals. We want to have Cypress Creek folks out and about and people can go, oh, that person knows about this church. But also at Regional Assembly at the end of October, we want all of our folks decked out in those shirts so that we can be helpful to anyone who is a visitor on our campus. And finally, many of you know Larry and Beverly Hornbeck. Well, they celebrated 50 years of marriage this weekend. And so we celebrate with them. A wonderful symbol for all of us, and I give thanks to God for them. Now grab the hand of somebody close, reach out, stretch out. God, we are thankful to be a part of a community, a community that you created, a place and a people that have opened themselves up to you so that what happens within these walls, but more importantly, what happens among us as people, whether we're here at at the church or out in the world, well, that your grace is able to work through us and touch the lives of many. And sometimes it will demand something of us and we might feel an ouch. But when we all come together and feel that collective ouch, not only does it not hurt quite as bad, but more importantly, what comes out of it is nothing short of a miracle. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen.